This video is to introduce how I have done um, C4 Sands uh, station for the Liverpool Overhead Railway, but it's also uh, here to provide um, some help for GMAX uh, users who wish to create a substantial model. But of course, there are limitations to the size of the actual model. You can single model that you can load into trains. So this is the, as you can see here, this is the C4 sand station. We're in Surveyor, and if I just uh, pick it up, that's map time. That's no good. Where are we? No, it's not going to play ball. Oh, uh, these map tiles are just ones that that um, the station. Passengers, C4 Sands, Meshes, this is what I've called it. And so if I um, click over here, it'll put another copy in. And that's a single model, or more or less a single model. It's a complex model, and so I, I built it up in sections. And this video is to show you how you can do that in GMAX. Um, this, just delete that. this one here is just the passenger section and I'll come back to that uh, but if I just zoom in a moment you'll see it's um, got two platforms and the platform numbers this is these are surveyor only there's the passengers and this is the track with the passenger uh, with the attachment points for the passengers and it's set for the correct height for this as you can see at the moment this is just the fixed track item without any uh, other track put in to connect everything up but uh, I'll come back to that. This, because what I, first of all, what I want to do is to show you the original, and um, this is so we're down obviously at track level here. So this is a uh, service coming in to the um, uh, westernmost platform. If we go back to trains, let's just have a look there. It's coming into this platform, so we're actually looking. Let's just take it down a bit. We're looking in that direction. I found it extremely difficult to make this model because there were so many variations uh, that occurred over time and also just getting information or details has been very difficult and I've had to simplify quite a lot and rationalise. So these are some of the pictures that I've got available from books and whatever. I don't believe that is actually Herculaneum, uh, C4 Sands rather. And this is C4 Stands. we're still looking in the same direction um, and here up above you can see the uh, ridge and furrow roof of the carriage shed and um, this is looking in the other direction towards Seaforth and Litherland uh, so we've got the stairs down each side here and this is a much truncated uh, shelter because this, I think this is after the fire, the malicious fire which destroyed a fair bit of the station uh, in the early 50s and here we are looking from the Litherland end back towards Seaforth sand station these are the stairways up at very odd angles um, and this is the edge of the carriage shed over here to the right so this is a, a special as you can see and this I'm particularly pleased to have this picture because it gave me the details for this ironwork which I was able to reproduce it's a nice color one the colors are fairly bright I think they're probably fairly accurate but I've tended to dull down um, the colors and um, so this is a working as you can see to dingle but it is facing, and it's facing towards Dingle. And despite the signal being off there, I believe it's actually, well, maybe what it's going to do is going to go towards Litherland. Litherland is in that direction. And then cross over and come back onto this platform for the working for Dingle. Or it could just leave from this platform and there's a crossover at the other end of the station as well. So there's that plat crossover on the Litherland direction. And there's the crossover on the Dingle direction. No, that's still the one to Liverland. And so, there we are, it is again. Yes, I've got, these are stills I grabbed from a video uh, on, like, that's on YouTube, and uh, so it's very smudgy as you can see, and it shows the shortened uh, shelter. This again is from another video that I found online, and you've got the signal cabin there, and the train just coming in from Dingle and those two in the stations is the Litherland end 
one from a book. A nice colour one coming in from Leatherland. And signal box. These lines here go off to the um, carriage shed. This is the um, where are we? This is the layout up the top left here. Uh, if I zoom in a bit here, C4 Sands. So you get the signalling layout. Mike Edge kindly sent me this. That's been a really valuable. And you can see the junction there off to the carriage shed, uh, which I've actually simplified, and a little loco shed there, which I've not yet modelled. Uh, and the two crossovers at C4 Sands Station. This is inside the carriage shed. This was great because it gave me details of the roof and the girder structures, which again I drastically simplified. And get a much better view there of the. This is the final version of the carriage shed. There was one built in 1906, and then that was knocked down 19 years later, and this was built in 1925. However, in making it, I have slightly reduced the width between the station and the carriage shed. Um, and you can see here that the carriage shed western wall actually curves. Well, I've, I've just gone straight. It's because there were a couple of short sidings inside, which I've just not, not modelled. Again, from the video, the train coming in towards, going to go to Dingle, from Dingle, coming this is the material that I've had to work with in order to try and get um, some sort of reproduction of the line of this particular location on the line and I laid them up in the, in the white line so that's going to be quite late that's in the 1950s this is the original Seafall station which was replaced by the carriage shed in 1906 and again in 1925 a lot of this detail here I'd love to have been able to model it but just getting well, first of all, it doesn't relate to the later carriage shed. I've modelled the 1926 one. Um, but nevertheless, it gives you an idea of the sheer complexity as far as modelling is concerned for reproducing these, these layouts. This looks like a very severe curve, but actually when you get it down on the ground, it's less of a severe curve than it looks. I'm even wondering if that's even... I don't think that's even Seaforth by the looks of it. I think that's a mistake on my part. And there we are coming in, heading in past the sheds. And coming, looking back towards the station. And that's just to give me an idea of uh, where it is on the map. At the moment, I just left it with the stairs coming down with actually without any support. So the version that I've got at the moment is still very much work in progress. But this gives you an overall idea. I think this is the 19, by the look of the car, it looks like the 1926 version and that's coming up from Netherland again. As you can see just about to see there there's the tracks of the Langston and Yorks Railway coming in. Okay so how did I do this? Let's let's take that down and let's have a look. So that's what I've tried to reproduce here, at least the, the feel of it. Um, as you can see there are no supports yet for the stairs. The the loco shed still has to go in but I wanted to get it out and about as it were uh, for Bob to have a go at because um, just to make sure I'm fitting it all in because the angles are really quite complex. Well the point of this video really, um, apart from, I'll come back to this in a moment, is to show you how I constructed this uh, model. And if we look at this config, it's fixed track, uh, and I've called it Seafall Sand Meshes because that's all the meshes there. And then main, well we've got the main mesh which you always have to start with uh, and if I go into the uh, I'm trying to remember which one I think it's well this will give you an idea of just how complex uh, making this was in GMAX okay and even that doesn't really show you uh, just the sheer complexity of it, if we go into my folder, let me just, the, f the start point was to try and get mesh station 1.2, see if it stands, mesh carriage shed, station platforms, I've got myself into a right on mix with this, station mesh station, station meshes, there we are, this will give you an idea, 29th of October, uh, 
and here we are. Now, this is uh, before I added the stairs and the shelters and quite a few other bits and pieces of detail. But you can see here that I've got all the attachment points in that I can fit. I'd like to have put, there's a viaduct attachment point here and a viaduct attachment point along here. Um, I may be able to move that across to here. I'm not sure if, I'm, if I can do that. When I've tried it before on a curve um, like that, I found I get some very strange effects. The splines go all over the place. So I may just leave it as I've got it at the moment, which is without any attachment point, which means that the uh, one of my short pieces of fixed track will just butt up against it, as indeed, let's have a look, here it is, as indeed this is what happens at the moment. I've just put these in. There's there's a piece of fixed track I just put in, or there rather. Uh, that's from Bob's uh, current version of the layout, and that's I just added that one in and put a bit of bit of vide up between them. And um, what's going to happen is when I add in all the track, uh, that will connect up. But those that's actually just butted up there. There's no, no actual connection. Well, you can see here that I've got a whole series of things. And if I was to look at the poly count for this, 30,000, we're way over. It would produce a far too massive single mesh for trains to render effectively. So I've had to divide it up. And the way I've done that is to start with something like this to try and get all the angles right. And believe me, this is about the fifth or sixth version I've made. And at the zero point, you can see there the zero, 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 uh, X, Y, Z, zero, zero, zero. Well, it's all in a group, so of attachment points. But trust me, at that point, at ground level, I put in one and I called it A dot station. And everything then refers to it. When I position all these meshes, uh, they're all related to a dot station. So let's have a look at the um, stairs right, the right hand stairs and shelter. No, we're not going to. Don't want that changed. There we are. So that's a separate mesh, and if we look in the poly count, 2870, that's okay. And if we look in the folder, that's what is it? Stairs right. Right stairs. It comes out at 568k, which is fine. I try and keep it between no more than about 800, as you can see there, junction. And actually, what I can do is just show you these. These uh, using PebSoft's uh, mesh viewer. So if we have a look in the girders, here we are. So that's my girder section. That's actually the track bed, which was smooth through the station, thank goodness, because that corrugated track bed really, really pushes the screen count, uh, the mesh count, poly count up. Uh, and if we open something else, let's have a look at junction. There we are. And you can see there's no track bed there at all, but it does have the some mesh there. I don't think there's any attachment points here. Let's have a quick look. Uh, well, let me this wireframe. Now, well, there's no attachment points, otherwise it would show them. And then let's open up another one. Well, let's have a look and see the main. That was when I was first. Let's open that up. And that is just the corrugated track bed. Corrugated. Uh, let's try and just move this up a bit. Can't remember how you do it now. Oops. Yeah, there we go. It's because it's pretty big. And then let's see the attachments. So there we are, those are all the attachments. So it's the corrugated mesh trap there, plus all these attachments floating about, which gives me, and there's that you can actually see a station has been highlighted there. If we have a quick look, you can see it's down at ground level, ground zero. Okay. So you can see here that I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten meshes. And the way I've organized them in the config is to have the main, that's with that corrugated track bed and the attachments, which gives me a dot station. And then I've simply produced, well I say simply, it's far from simple, I've produced separate meshes 
that are all on the correct, absolutely correct alignment, and which all use A dot station as the location point. So you can see that all the bits that come together to actually form the overall piece of fixed track. And there's the attached track, the attached track entries. And there's the two viaduct attachments, which have to be, I found, in line with each other. You can't have one at 90 degrees and another one at 70. That's just the usual guff with my wrong work. <laughs> incorrect website honestly okay so that's the config and each part then is I model it um, separate it from the other so here's the walkway for example which is the connection between the uh, western platform I don't know whether it's up or down um, and the carriage shed quite a small mesh that one and let's open another one. Uh, let's have a look at the carriage shed. Carriage shed, as I say, I've had to simplify considerably. I left out quite a bit of detail simply because it was getting too big for its own boots. And that is uh, fixed track down to the end there. And bec but because there's roof glazing, plenty of roof glazing, and windows at the side. It's easy to position buffer stops in there. The other one down at Herculaneum was less easy. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea of how uh, I can produce something, or I produce something which is fairly complex, but which trains can handle. So how do we actually use this? Well, uh, after a bit of jiggery pokery, as it were, I discovered that once it's in, I have to rotate this one 35 degrees and then this one over here, which is simply the it's the station, the industry, um, I've actually rotated that 30 degrees. I thought I had, had got them at the correct same angle, but <laughs> uh, I'd made this when I had an early version of this and I haven't altered it or corrected it. Nevertheless, it's going to be fine. So what I do is I move that until it's ghostly platform. It's actually using my glass texture is over the top of the platforms and there we are okay now it doesn't attach or anything and don't worry about this flickering because that's going to disappear uh, once we go into driver and it's a nuisance but not much I can do about that well, I suppose there is but I'm not going to okay so now we need to add some track we need the LOR track and we need, um, here it is, and we need it without the third rail, some of it without the third rail, because that's what we use for the um, uh, junctions. So let's try that first. Uh, this is where it becomes, you have to be a little bit patient, because you basically, oh, I've got a gap there, you basically got to do it. How did I do it now? Well, I think I did it like this. And then I'll put a one in there. And whoops, that's not what I want. What I want is one in there and the junction. Thank you. Right, and then I need to get a height, a track height. So we get the vertex height of the track, 5.3. There we are. Let's put all these up to 5.3 meters. And we'll put that one there. And this one goes over here. And this junction goes in here. And then this one goes over here. Okay, and then we'll just straighten that one out to tidy it up, make it look good. And maybe need to adjust this line point position back a bit. There was a curve on this bit. And then we do the same with the other. Right. Here we go. This one has a little more complexity because there's another, there's a reverse siding which goes there. That's for this bit here. And then let's apply the heights. 
everywhere. Good. And then we'll take that one up to there. One to there. That to there. That one over a bit at the moment, so about here. Take this one over to here. And there we are, that goes there. And then we'll move this one into position. Take that up as close to that as we can. And move that one over to make it look more like the original. And then let's put a straighten here. There we are. So that gives us the beginning of our track work for these um, for this fixed track section. I must do something about that, that's really annoying me. Uh, we do have a double track section here, double track junction, so let's move, make this separately. Oh, we want to go that way, don't we? To get the third rail on the right hand side, we only want track without the third rail. Make them up. I think to refine it we need smaller lengths of track with third rail, but I'm just doing this to illustrate how I've conceived how the whole thing is going to come together. So let's do a bit of moving. It's going to go there. So we'll take this over here. I do understand that this is going to cause all sorts of fine games when first wired up, as it were, or tracked up. And I'm sure Bob is going to curse me for producing something quite as awkward as this. But it will still be a fair bit easier than we have had in the past. We'll go no third. We do a bit of third rail with the third rail on the right, and it's going to go there. And we do a little bit without the third rail because of the crossover. Where you wouldn't have a third rail. Let's connect through. And here we go. We go one there. Actually that's silly. What I should do is delete this section. That's third rail. No, 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 I am correct. What am I doing? This comes up to here. And then this one joins in here. There we are. And that gives us our, let me just move that over a bit. That gives us our junction, the third rail avoided. And do, let's do the same over on this one. So we want to our track, but this time we want it with it on the third rail on the left. And we want length here and have no on the, on the oops, monorail <laughs> so this stolen belly bunion uh, we want this on the left that's the wrong way just undo that there we are let's give it all the correct height so this is the sort of thing which these sort of junctions require, but nevertheless it's worth the effort. <laughs> there we are. Uh, and we'll just take that over. Oops. No, we don't want anything else, thank you. Just want to move things. Just gonna put a little bit of that there. We've got too much actually. Oh, we have this, so we can delete that. And delete spine point there. Don't need that. And that's around the wrong way, I've just seen. Ah, joy. 
bring that to there. Actually, the third rail continued a little bit further than I'm showing here into the into the um, carriage shed. But then it was they moved stuff about inside the carriage shed uh, using a cable connection. There's no way I'm going to attempt to model that. Yeah. Okay, so apart from that bit being wrong, uh, you can see now how the whole thing begins to come together. Uh, let's add the other part of this junction. a bit I don't need isn't it I really think track is important <laughs> as poor Bob will bear witness and the harassing I've done about track yeah, let's just bring that up obviously I've got to tidy all this up Um, and that's where the fun begins. But you can see here that I've got that junction isn't quite. Oops, that's the wrong one. Bring that back down to there, and then this one. I need to bring it down a bit to keep the geometry right. Okay, so you get the idea, and now I can just connect up here to the um, to the station. So there we are. Let's put those in and connect up here. And should go in about here. Right. There we are. Let's get the nice curve of the station. And ditto here, you're getting the idea. So you might think, well, that's it, job done. Well, it's not because you've got two, you've got two um, crossovers to put in. There's got to be a crossover here, which is why I've left this space, and there's a crossover to go in here. Uh, so overall, you'll begin to get an idea of how the Liverpool Overhead Railway Junction at C4 Sands with its carriage shed and all the odds and ends uh, fit together. Uh, this is, as I say, not the final release version because if nothing else I've got, you can see I need a support over here. I need supports under the stairs and there's some other odds and ends. There's a gap down the way there. Uh, but just to show you that um, in driver, so let's have a quick look, quick drive. Okay, so you can see now, let's go to free roaming. You can see where we're getting that awful, irritating flashing is gone. What I must do actually is lower those invisible platforms down a bit. So we have C4 stands with its passengers and its track in place, signal box. No signaling yet, Bob will do that. Um, and you can see how the whole thing comes in um, as a single model and it means that once, now that that's in, we can change that curve, make that a more curvy, that bit there coming in, although it's going to be a little bit beyond the black line which Bob has put in as the guide. Um, and over here, the track has to be changed to um, LOR track with sleepers, and it's on a, as you can see there, it's going to be on a, an embankment. And the Lanks and Yorks lines come in by the side of it, and there's a bridge and everything, there, so that's more to come. But this effectively is the northern terminus of the layout as we are, the route as we are modelling it. You've got that severe curve there, so as you can see there's a bit of a dog leg needs to be sorted. 
I can see all the errors as I go along uh, doing this. So there we are, that gives you an idea of how to create a substantial uh, model uh, as a piece of fixed track with a station as industry um, over the top of it to bring it in. Um, the carriage shed will be, um, can take, uh, there's four there, so it can take eight uh, three car sets. The little steam locomotive that they used um, for track maintenance should be here with buffers and a little corrugated shed, so that will have to come in. I may do it separately, I'm not sure yet. Uh, but there we are, that gives us uh, that. And just to remind you once more that the stacking of meshes, a whole series of meshes there, main, um, the carriage shed, the junction, which is this bit here, uh, the signal box, the walkway, which is a bit across from the station into the carriage shed, uh, station, which is part of this here, the supports, that is the verticals, uh, the girders, the cross pieces, I've split all those up because they're high poly counts and left hand and right hand stairs and indeed shelters, they go together. So there we are, I hope that's been of use. Uh, so there's a number of tips there as well as a bit of an update on the Liverpool Overhead Railway but I hope it will encourage those of you who are modelling with GMAX to have a go at some more complex uh, models when you get these sort of really demanding situations and believe me this has been a demanding situation to get this done uh, it has not been easy um, it's been very frustrating in many ways the track is all higgledy piggledy at the moment so it's a bit of refining there but that's a sort of slow but sure slog to get that done uh, so we have the Liverpool overhead uh, advancing yet further from a um, generic station at C4 to something that looks more like um, the original. As I say I was limited with the resources that I had available to look at the station so I've basically either ignored or spoofed up whatever happens down below. Um, there was it was obviously all boxed in at some stage and there was much more complex um, brickwork and that along here. I'm not going to worry about it. There are times when you just have to draw the line and say that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a comment, uh, positive if possible, uh, and if you've got any questions or queries about GMAX and about making models on uh, this sort of type, then uh, please do post them because I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, and um, no time for when this is going to be released. Bob hasn't even received it yet, so um, he's got to give it the once over most definitely, and I've got to add some um, changes and some variants to it, some, ad some additions uh, to it. I can see a number of things already that will need to be um, adjusted. Uh, so um, that, but that's the way it goes with these models. Hope you like the video. If you have, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. It encourages me to make more of these. And um, I'll see you in the next one.